My name is Matthew Johnson Robertson, and I'm the uh, CEO and co-founder of Refraction AI. And we're a company that builds uh, autonomous robots to do last mile delivery. We're trying to build something that is like a bike messenger, but without a person on it. So they're about the size of a person on a bike. They come up to my shoulders. They're about as wide as uh, a bike lane, uh, and they're about five or six feet long, and about you know um, a little less than uh, a meter, um, a little over a meter. Um, and, and really what they look like is sort of um, uh, little pods that are pretty big. They can hold five or six grocery bags um, and they travel, you know, uh, 15, uh, 20 kilometers an hour um, on the margin of the road. So we're based here in Ann Arbor and this is where we do both the R&D design and then also we're deployed. So Ann Arbor is a, a nice little college town um, about an hour away from Detroit. Um, and the reason we're based here is that me and my co-founder are both professors at the University of Michigan. We have uh, eight robots um, that are on the road doing deliveries every day. We now do grocery and food. Um, and we're working with a pilot group of about 600 people that get deliveries, um, usually about on a weekly basis. Um, and so what that's enabled us to do is a couple things, kind of prove out the technology, but the second bit of that is kind of serve a, a public function here. So uh, Ann Arbor's been hit just like the rest of the world um, with the coronavirus uh, pretty bad. And so one of the first things that we noticed is that there was a massive, massive wait for getting grocery delivery. And if you look at at-risk groups, the elderly, people with underlying conditions, um, they're really in a tough spot. You could wait weeks to get a grocery delivery slot using the existing system. Um, and the second bit of that is that those grocery deliveries involve gig workers. So those are workers that aren't full-time, they don't have healthcare, those type of insurances. And so one of the difficult things here in America is that means that those workers are putting themselves at risk without a lot of safety net. And so we saw two real big needs there. One was to provide more delivery capacity. So just there really weren't enough workers to be able to facilitate this. And the second was to introduce, you know, truly contactless delivery once it leaves the grocery store. And so, you know, a big part of that is, is cutting other people out of that supply chain that add additional risk uh, and factors around, um, you know, uh, perhaps communicating the virus. Uh, so we do some disinfection within the robot itself, so there are UV lights within the robot, and then we're wiping the robot down with um, uh, uh, cleaner air between every delivery. And so because we're doing point-to-point -point deliveries, which again is one of the big wins you get with robots because of the kind of cost model that can work, it means that we can clean the robot between every delivery and, and really reduce the risk of, of communicating the virus to people um, through that. think about bus drivers, you think about uh, grocery store workers, and then in our sector you think about delivery workers. And those workers are not the ones that are getting applauded uh, in the evenings, they're not the ones that you know get really glowing stories written about them, but it is your DoorDash driver, your Uber Eats driver that is putting themselves at risk every day to bring food to you. It's the person that's going and picking an Instacart. Those are people that are putting themselves at risk. And I think what this has done is it's highlighted sort of the lie that we had told ourselves, which is that you know, robots are gonna replace what is a, a, a great and fair job that exists right now. And if you talk to those workers, I think they will tell you that, you know, they would like something safer, they would like something better. And they've had to fight and oftentimes go on strike to get even basic protections. And so when I think about what robots offer, uh, what I'm hoping is that we can use robots to address, in this case, um, people putting themselves at risk in a scenario which is unnecessary if we can do it with robots. And while, you know, to some degree that it's going to mean that there's going to be job displacements and I don't want to underplay that, um, the question is, do we think it is fair to ask people to put themselves, but not just themselves, but their families at risk to do a job that other people don't want to do or are unwilling to do for themselves? And so I think if we're going to come to a fair and more equitable way of thinking about this, my hope is that it's going to balance the needs of society. People want and need food and going to the grocery store right now is a dangerous proposition. And if we want to serve uh, people that are in high risk groups, I think we're going to need ways of doing that with robots. And so I'm hoping that this is a, a turning point for not just robotics, but for the way we think about the gig economy, the way we think about Uber drivers, the way we think about all these parts of this puzzle that we you know, oftentimes don't think about. And I think they, this has thrust them into the mainstream and hopefully asks some important questions.